Hi, this is Benjamin Prater, and thank you for being part of this course. It is my goal for this course to give you the tools that you need to be able to develop and profit from your own iPhone applications. It was in my own frustration and trying to understand that process that I created this course so that you'll have an easier time unwinding what can be a curious and complicated process. It is my hope that you'll find this series enlightening and useful and at the end of the journey, you can be proud to say that you've created an app that now lives in App Store. One of the big challenges in doing anything new is coming to terms with that process that makes it possible. For instance, it may seem overwhelming to rebuild a car's engine if you've never done it before. However, if you get an experienced mechanic to stand there with you and show you what bolts to pull out and what pieces to pull off, suddenly it goes from the realm of, wow, this is nearly impossible, to... Okay, I see what's going on here. I can do this. It's been my experience that this is true any time you confront a new process, and it was certainly my experience when I started looking at the iPhone as a serious development platform. There were a list of things I agonized over when I started looking at the material that Apple provided developers. But as usual, given enough time and energy, it was simply a series of molehills that needed to be stepped over not nearly a mountain it first appeared to be. And that's what we will do in this course, boil down app development into manageable bytes. So who is this course for? Well, this course is directly targeted toward folks who are interested in creating iPhone apps, aren't the programming type, but are the type of personality who makes things happen. This course is not directly for the software programmer interested in developing iPhone apps, but if you do develop, I'm sure you will find lots of juicy nuggets, since development is only one piece to this puzzle. Here's another metaphor for the process. Just because I don't have the skill set to build a house doesn't mean that I can't critically understand that process and be evolved at every level. In the same way, this course will show you what you need to know, even though you won't be working the saw or throwing the hammer. So here's another question. Do I have to know any programming? Do I have to have developed some kind of software before? Well, if you've done any kind of programming or created software in the past with the help of programmers, you'll find that the experience will be helpful as we work through this course. But if you haven't, don't worry. My job will be to show you the steps that I've used many times in going from concept to finished project. I've used the same process since 2001 to teach my students how to do the same thing. And my students always come back to me and say, I totally wowed over the programmer with the papers I presented him. So what should I expect? Well, a common question that I get is this. All right, so what should I expect? All right, so here's another common question I get. Will I be an expert in iPhone development when I'm done with this course? Well, here's my answer. I want you to be dangerous. I want you to know enough about the process that you know what you know and you know what you don't know. I want you to have the resources to get the information you need. I want you to mentally be able to say, yep, I can definitely see myself creating an iPhone app and then go out and do it. I don't want to give you the wrong idea that you'll be an expert when you finish this course. I've been involved in technology for a long time, and few people attain the status of expert in any given technology. It takes a huge amount of time and effort to get to that place. The goal for myself and the goal that I have for you is to be able to converse easily in the language of iPhone application development. All right, so what about Android or Microsoft or RIM? Well, first, Android is a competing operating system that was spearheaded by the folks at Google. Now, Android is an open-source operating system that any vendor can pick up and use in their own phones. At the point that I recorded this section of the course, no hardware is currently running the Android platform. But this doesn't mean it's not coming. Plenty of vendors are planning on using the Android system, and the team working on Android has been talking about creating a similar marketplace to App Store. It is a very real possibility that App Store will have a real competitor in Android and, it, and its App Store clone. I don't think it's a scary thing if you want to develop iPhone apps. It simply means that there's another market that you can create apps for when the time comes and enough devices are running on that platform. Microsoft, who has created the operating system that runs on millions of phones, and Rem, the maker of the BlackBerry mobile phone, has announced that they plan on taking on App Store as well. Well, if nothing else, this certainly validates what Apple has created 
It will make for an interesting marketplace. Now, a side question that you may have here is, will apps that I create for iPhone work on these other platforms? Well, the answer is probably not, unless you are doing games, and in some cases, they may be semi-portable. Now, iPhone uses a development platform that is highly tuned to the hardware in the phone, such as multi-touch and the lack of a tactile keyboard. So here's another question. Can I really make money doing this? Should I quit my day job and do this full time? Now, we're in the very early days of App Store. We continue to read daily reports about folks who are making a killing selling their own iPhone apps. It's not a fluke. Uh, it's real, and it's all about supply and demand. Now, like any business, your success is going to largely depend on you. Now, I do recommend that you take this project as ser serious as you would any business. There's a big difference in the way the mind works when it sees a venture as a hobby and the way the mind works when it's a real business. Now, if you make that mental switch, it will definitely translate through this process. Can you make money? Absolutely. Now, many folks are making a great income through App Store. And App Store has set itself up as a great system for the developer. That is, it makes it simple for folks to find apps, easy to install them, and never ask for a credit card number. It is all taken care of for us as developers. And beyond that, we are seeing more of the world coming online with iPhone. Nearly 10 million people own an iPhone today. Now, with the price drop uh, down to $200 in the U.S., the phone is more affordable than ever. So we're going to continue seeing that ecosystem grow. All right, so what's the difference between the iPhone and the iPod Touch? Well, in this tutorial, we're going to use the word iPhone to describe both the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Now, these devices are very similar, both in size and appearance. Now, the big difference is that the iPod Touch, you can't make any phone calls. Uh, it's also lacking a microphone and speakers. So if your application is going to take advantage of either, uh, folks that are using iPod Touch will have to plug in an external headset and microphone. Now, both devices can download and consume applications through App Store. Now, for the sake of simplicity during our course, we're going to use the verbiage iPhone to talk about both devices, the iPhone and the iPod Touch. All right, so is it iPhone or the iPhone? Well, if you listen to how Steve Jobs and Apple talk about the iPhone, they don't say the iPhone. They simply refer to the device as iPhone. I'll try to be consistent and use that same phrase as we talk about the device in this series. Now, what is the iPhone SDK? Now, you're going to hear about the iPhone SDK as you walk through this process. And you might wonder, well, what is that? In traditional software development, an SDK, or Software Development Kit, includes a variety of things that a developer needs to create software. Think about uh, an auto mechanic. To do his job, he needs a variety of tools beyond just a wrench or a screwdriver. A mechanic will need to access to information, such as a manual that has descriptive explanations on how to uninstall and install parts. He will need diagnostic tools that allow him to plug into the car's computer to find out what error codes mean and analyze what the drivetrain is doing. Now, a mechanic will need to place to work on his vehicles, and it doesn't hurt if he has a little experience. So that's similar to what an SDK is. It's a package of information and tools that a developer will use to develop iPhone applications. The package includes tools to build source code for the iPhone, debugging tools, profiling tools, user interface building tools, and so on. Now, it isn't necessary for you to download this package if you don't intend to program for the iPhone. But you're welcome to download it. It can't hurt, and you'll have it there just in case you need it. All right. Do you have questions? Now, if you have any questions related to the series, I would like to hear about them. So if it's in the realm of possibility to answer them, we will dig up the answers. So feel free to contact me directly or post your question on the forums.